If you're at all familiar with video game technical terminology, you've probably heard of the concept of a hitbox. A hitbox is basically an invisible rectangular prism that exists around something, right? Maybe it's the player character, maybe it's the item you're trying to grab, maybe it's the bad guy you're trying to hit. But the idea is that rather than try to figure out where you're making contact on this complicated three-dimensional shape, you just define a general area. Well, vPython has such a construct uh, with every 3D shape that it creates called the bounding box. We're gonna learn about this first by creating a sphere. We'll call it sphere one. We'll locate it over to the left a little bit, give it a radius of 0.2. And then we're going to access the sphere's bounding box. So this, uh, this attribute here, dot bounding underscore box, open parentheses, close parentheses, that is attached to every 3D object that vPython creates, spheres, boxes, extrusions, even compounds we'll see in a few minutes. But this attribute here pulls in all the information that you need about a rectangular prism that exactly encases the object that you're working with. So for example, for this sphere, it's gonna be a rectangular prism whose width on each side is equal to the diameter of the sphere so that the outermost point of each sphere going in the uh, X, Y, and Z directions just touches the outside of the box. Basically, it's the smallest rectangular prism that you can construct that contains all the points of the shape. So for a sphere, the bounding box is going to be a cube because the sphere is the same in all directions. So the uh, bounding box is gonna be the same in all three directions. Uh, we'll take a look later at how you might get a non-cubical bounding box. But that's the general idea is that you uh, store all the information you need to basically construct and study this bounding box. So let's suppose, for example, we access the bounding box here. First, let's take a look at just what this object is. Um, so we're going to save Sphere1's bounding box as box1, and then we'll print what box1 is just to see, uh, see what it is. Um, so in the animation window, we're going to have our green sphere like we created over to the left. And here we've printed box one. So when we access sphere one's bounding box, this is what vPython is seeing. It's seeing a list of eight vectors. Uh, these position vectors are the coordinates in 3D space of the eight corners of the rectangular prism. So when you have a rectangular prism, it's gonna have eight corners. Uh, and so you those uniquely define where the rectangular prism is, how it's oriented, etc. And so this gives you, for example, the upper left front corner, the upper left back corner, the upper right front corner, the upper right back corner, and so on and so forth. There's eight of those, right? Because there's, there's three dimensions and two possible extremes to them. So that's two times two times two makes eight possible corners for this thing to have. And that information is really useful because that tells you basically the physical extent of the space that this shape takes up. For example, let's suppose we wanted to visualize the bounding box. What we could do, for example, would be to put a small sphere at the corner, or excuse me, at each corner of the bounding box. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna loop over these points that are in box one. Uh, remember, box one is a list, so you can treat it like a list, meaning you can iterate over the items that are in the list. So for each point in sphere one's bounding box, we're gonna create a sphere. I know spheres on spheres. Uh, just remember that the green one is the sphere we created. The white ones are the little markers. Notice that these are gonna be much smaller than sphere one. But we're gonna put each of these spheres at the eight points that are in this bounding box. So let's press control two to run. And here is my visualization of the bounding box. I've got my original sphere here. And then these white dots represent the eight corners of the bounding box around the sphere. And you can see, for example, that uh, if you imagine a wall, a square wall between uh, all four of these points, that wall is just barely gonna be tangent to this one point here on the sphere. Same thing on this side. 
Same thing on this side and this side and this side and this side. All six sides are going to just glance off of the edge of the sphere. We can't, we're not going to make it any larger. We're not going to make it any smaller. That's exactly the size that encapsulates the sphere here. And I mentioned earlier that you could make this um, non cubical. So for example, instead of a radius, uh, you, I don't know if we've talked about this, but you can actually specify a size vector for a sphere to stretch it and squish it. So let's suppose, for example, instead of a radius of 0 0.2, I make it 0 0.2 in the x direction, 0 0.4 in the y direction, and 0 0.1 in the z direction. This is going to make an ellipsoid instead. So you can see here I've taken that sphere, I've stretched it in the Y, and I've flattened it in the Z. And you can see that my bounding box adjusts accordingly. My bounding box is now uh, taller in the Y direction and much slimmer in the Z direction. Uh, in this little, uh, looks like looks like maybe a, some, uh, it, oh, I know what this looks like. It looks like that, that fruit candy you used to get out of the machine. You put the quarter in, you turn, and you get this handful of all the different fruit candies. It looks like one of those. Um, but each of the faces of the bounding box is now adjusted in size to exactly encapsulate uh, the sphere. Well, not a sphere anymore, the ellipsoid. Uh, we're still calling it a sphere. Now, let's turn this back to a proper sphere. This equals 0 0.2. Uh, you can also use this information to find out the extent of the shape, right? Remember, you have all of this information here. Well, that means somewhere in here is the maximum x value and a maximum and minimum x value, max y and minimum y, max z and minimum z. That's useful because maybe I want to find a particular corner of the bounding box, or maybe I want to just attach a point to this sphere that's in a certain corner there. So you could also use this information to find the extent of the shape. So I've made a little uh, script here where we're going to find x max, x min, y max, y min, z max, and z min for this bounding box. So in order to find a maximum, you have to start out with a value that's very small and then loop over all the possible values and use the max function. In order to find a minimum, you have to start out with a value that's very big so that you can then use the minimum function to work your way down to the minimum value of the set of values that you're working with. So again, we're looping over all the points in box and we're updating x max, y max, z max, x min, y min, and z min accordingly by comparing the current x, y, z value to the maximum or minimum x, y, z value. And then we'll print all that information. And remember this thing is uh, centered, the sphere is centered at negative one and it goes out 0.2 in all directions. So my minimum x is going to be negative 1.2 and my maximum x is going to be 0 0.8 because that's going out to negative 1 and then going left and right by 0.2. My y and z values on the other hand are both centered at 0 and they go out 0.2 in each direction. So that's going to be negative 0 0.2, 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So you can get the x max and x min, etc. Uh, from this information. It's not explicitly part of the uh, bounding box, but you can get it pretty easily, right? You can just copy and paste this for any bounding box that you have. Um, and it's also worth mentioning that this works for compound objects. Uh, if you're not familiar with the compound feature, uh, check out the video linked in the description below about how that works in vPython. First, we're going to take a second sphere. We're going to make a clone of the first sphere. And we're going to change its position to be over to the right, and we're going to give it a blue color. And then we're going to make a compound of these two spheres. So when I press Control 2, I end up with my two spheres here. Uh, I don't really see anything different because compounding just links them together in the computer's mind. It doesn't really change anything for the visual description. But what I can do is repeat this entire process for my new compound object. So for example, uh, let's have this uh, print for us a little divider so that we can visually see uh, that we're looking at something different. So we're calling the compound here spheres. So for compound, you just provide a list of objects, give it a name so that you can reference it. And these two spheres, we can no longer individually access them, but we can access the compound object. So we're going to call uh, this one, why don't we call it sphere box? Uh, and let's call it spheres.boundingbox, surrounding spheres. And we're going to replace box one everywhere with sphere box. 
Uh, let's visualize the corners here. So we're gonna replace box one with sphere box. Again, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's the same structure. It's the same idea of a bounding box. It doesn't matter what's inside. It just matters that it has these eight corners. Um, let's give this thing uh, some uh, spheres here. And let's make this one, let's see, we already have green and blue. Why don't we make these corners yellow? How about that? Uh, and then we can do the same thing here. Uh, again, if you're doing this in your own code, all you have to do is change this one uh, line here because this is just a, a placeholder name point here. And then we can print all of the min and max information there. Press control two to run. And what you'll notice is that for the yellow spheres, uh, these are sort of half yellow, half white over here. Uh, I tell you, what, why don't we turn off those spheres for right now? Uh, we'll just turn there visible to false, just since that's a little bit difficult to see. There we go. So now you can see the yellow dots form the rectangular prism that fits just around the compound object here. So I'm imagining now a box, a rectangular prism that exactly encompasses the green and the blue with no space to spare. And you can see I get information about that bounding box too. Uh, interestingly, the, uh, the X-Men, I hadn't seen this before, but the X-Men and the X-Max get contracted just a little bit, because instead of being at negative 1.2, they're at negative 1.1989, so the bounding box around the compound is just ever so slightly smaller. Uh, but that didn't happen for the Y and the Z, that's interesting. I wonder if that's because this thing extends in the X direction, but it, it didn't have to extend anything in Y and Z. I don't know. That's a, that is something interesting to look at. I will pass that on to the development team. Um, but yeah, so, so this is really useful for a compound, for example, if you wanted to draw the bounding box around it. And this is really what's going on in a video game, because in a video game, your avatar might be composed of multiple shapes moving together, and the bounding box is just keeping this uh, or the hitbox, it's usually called in uh, in a video game, is keeping the shape that's in general around that just to keep track of the space more easily. So that's a little tour of the bounding box in VPython. Uh, really useful uh, for making uh, some of your uh, object interactions a little bit simpler. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.